Okay. Okay. This is a very unique machine. It's made for specific work. It's all explained to you. But up front here it hand handles two 100 pound cylinders of propane gas. And that feeds this machine to keep it at the temperature that we want it. When you're roasting things in it, we carry a temperature of 200 degrees to 400 degrees, depending on what you're cooking in there. This door over here helps you to look inside and to notice, to see the, the chain that travels up and down. Once you load, load corn or other product in the back, and I'll show you that's very, very easy. You open up this rear door. Load your corn or your potatoes or sweet potatoes in the back. 20 minute cycle for the corn. Once you load it here, it goes through the machine, it goes up, across, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, and it finally comes back up over here. And if you, what you do is you take the corn and have a cooler here. You load them into the cooler and it continues to uh, tenderize the corn. Once you do that, what we normally did was set up a table here with a hot pot on it and we had butter. And we'd take it and skin the, the skin down off of the corn, dunk it in the butter, wrap the handle with a, with a paper towel and hand it to the person and they just went away and ate it and enjoyed the whole thing. I can show you on the side over here too. How much can you charge for corn? 20 minutes for corn. But how much can you charge for each corn? Oh, you can sit. I've seen them selling it for $3.50 an ear. The sweet potatoes and the white potatoes, you may have to put them through two cycles, but you do the same thing. You bring them out, you put them in a container, close it, and then as the, as the people come up to buy them, you bring them out, split them open, pop the, pop the inside up in the air, you put butter on it, or if they want uh, something else on top of it, sugar, brown sugar, whatever they want on top. You put that on top, you hand it to them in a little paper boat. And for those two, you get three, three fifty a piece for that potatoes. You can always see what's going on by looking in here. You can see all of the, all the racks, as I told you before. The racks go to the top of the machine, they come down and they zigzag all the way through. And one important thing you have to do is you have to keep oiling these chains here so that it can move free. It doesn't, doesn't freeze up. As I say, if you're steadily working at a festival, you, you make sure the machine operates very, very easily. You flip that switch and they start going around all by themselves. You don't have to do any work except we dip the ears of corn in water, bring it up. Don't soak it. Just dip it in there. Lay them on the shelf like you see the corn there now. And when it comes back up around here, it'll be done to the perfect. The uh, machine has shows the on the back of this. You can see the temperature. Now you you'll be cooking mostly at 400 degrees, since they don't really get hit with any flame. It's, it's the air temperature that you want to control. You can do that one of two ways. You can open up the damper on top, release the heat if it gets too hot, or if you want to build up more heat, you just come to the back. If, if you notice on the back of the machine that the thermostat is getting too high, you just come back over here. Very simple. There's a leaf, there's a valve here. You cut back on the amount of propane that's going into there. And if you need it, if you if you're set light like that, and you need more heat, you just very easily turn it straight up in the air, and that'll bring the mo maximum amount of heat in there. If you look down at the if you look down at the pipes down here. There are four pipes in here. Each one of them can put out probably two two hundred thousand BTU. Of course, you're not going to cook at that temperature, but you do want you do want to be able to control them. These have these are the air locks on them. You turn them to give it more air or less air. You don't want a yellow flame because the yellow flame will put soot up. So you you crank that so it gets just the right amount.
very easy to clean. You can take it to a car wash and open up the doors as we have here and you spray inside the machine and all the debris will fall to the bottom and out into the slots that are made down there. And you're done. No special scarring. As you said, the most important thing to do though is keep oiling the chains so that they don't rust or lock up on you. You wouldn't want that to happen.